I know COVID has made us kind of um, kind of atrophied our, 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 our muscles, our spiritual muscles. <laughs> so um, pray that um, gives you strength so that uh, strengthen them and uh, definitely you get blessing. So again, welcome to Ferndale Seventh-day Adventist Church. Uh, my sermon title today is Secret to Living. Think of sin like a fish in water. Fish doesn't realize that it's in water because the water is in front of it, <laughs> behind the fish, and around the fish, and under the fish, and even in the fish. Do you see how the water can become part of what the fish is? And you and I are deeply surrounded by sin and its effects. And some people don't even realize it. You know, people believe that they can do good. Thus, they believe that they are inherently good. But the reality is none of their good works are naturally good, nor it's pure, nor untouched by sin. And none of the good works are adequate enough to abolish the penalty of sin. Romans 3.10, as the scripture says, no one is righteous, not even one. See, everyone has turned from correctness into error, from innocence and into evil, from, from truths to lies, from intelligence to Stupidity, <laughs> and from wisdom into foolishness. The, the very clothes that we are wearing you know, at this moment, nothing more than the effects of Adam and Eve, being embarrassed of their nakedness, exposed before holy and perfect God. And so we wear clothes today. With that said, is there any hope for you and me in the future? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come before you today, Lord, and ask for your help. Lord, sin is an eternal problem. But I thank you, Lord, for finding a way around it. But Lord, we have to just be willing to. We even need help for that. We ask the Holy Spirit to open our hearts and open our minds that we may be able to accept your truth, and live it daily. In your name we pray. So to answer the question, is there any hope for you and, and me in the future, is found in our biblical verses today. In Romans 5, 8 through 11, where it states, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still sinners. And since we have been made right in God's sight by the blood of Christ, he will certainly save us from God's condemnation. For since our friendship with God was restored by the death of his son, while we were still 
his enemies, you will certainly be saved through the life of his son. So now we can rejoice in our wonderful new relationship with God because our Lord Jesus Christ has made us friends of God. Now we ought to call our Lord owner because he possesses our lives. You know, in him, we, we live and, and move and have our being. We ought to call our Lord Father. We ought to be obedient sons and, and daughters because he is our only hope and help. See, God is our refuge and, and strength, always ready to help in times of trouble. So we will not fear when earthquakes come and the mountains crumble into the sea. The Lord of heavenly armies is here among us. And the God of Israel is our fortress. Be still and know that I am God. I will be honored by every nation. I will be honored throughout the world. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my savior in whom I find protection. He is my shield, the power that saves me and my place of safety. The name of the Lord is a strong fortress. The godly run to him and are saved. You know, the rich think of their wealth you know, as a, a strong defense, you know, they, they imagine it to be like a high wall of, of safety. Hardiness goes before destruction, and humility precedes honor. The spouting off before listening to the facts is both shameful and foolish. The Holy Spirit can Endure a sick body, but who can bear our spirit? Intelligent people are always ready to learn. Their, their ears are open for knowledge. Whatever is happening around you, are your treasures built on the rock? You don't possess treasures on things that pass away. See, it's not family or the government or, or anything else that matters, but it's God who really matters. See, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, is where strength and safety are. Everything that you have and know about Jesus Christ is everything you need for strength and safety. You are waiting and longing, right, for this earth to get better? <laughs> well, God is waiting to burn it up. Don't you even want to rest in his strength and safety, which is not of this world? You even want God to be God that he truly is? Every morning when you wake up from your sleep, you'll find your strength and safety in Jesus Christ. Now, he is the one who bore the cross for your sins to give you a refuge forever. You know, this secret of living has eluded us. But Jesus Christ gave us a very important secret to living. And it's only a secret because not everybody believes or nor they live it. Now here's the secret. The secret to living is dying. And the way to life is death. 
John 12, 24, 26. I tell you the truth, unless a kernel of wheat is planted in the soil and dies, it remains alone. But its death will produce many new kernels, plentiful harvests of new lives. Those who love their lives in this world will lose it. And those who care nothing for their life in this world will keep it for eternity. Anyone who wants to serve me must follow me because my servants must be where I am. And the Father will honor anyone who serves me. See, it's when you surrender and give your life over to Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior that you will truly live. See, in these last days, the Holy Spirit will bring you to the cross. Philippians 3, 10 to 11. Says, I want to know Christ and experience the mighty power that raised him from the dead. I want to suffer with him, sharing in his death, so that one way or another, I will experience the resurrection from the dead. Notice the degree of life you can have is very much dependent on the degree of dying you are willing to go through. See, this is because the secret of living is dying and death is a key to life. Are you dead to self yet? You're finally dead to self when you are forgotten or neglected or purposely ignored and you don't bite or, or hurt <laughs> with the insult of the oversight. But your heart is happy for being counted worthy to suffer for Jesus Christ. You are finally dead to self when your good is spoken as of evil. <laughs> your wishes are crossed. Your advice disregarded. Your opinion ridiculed. And you refuse to let anger rise in your heart or even defend yourself. But take it all in patience and in loving silence. So you're finally dead to self. When you lovingly and, and, and patiently bear any disorder or irregularities or any annoyance, when you stand face to face with waste and folly and spiritual insensibility and endure it as Jesus Christ endured. You are finally dead to self when you are content with any food, any offering, any climate, any society, any clothing, and any interpretation by the will of God. You are finally dead to self when you never care to refer to yourself in conversations or to record your own good works or, or itch after praises or when you truly love to be unknown. So you are finally dead to self when you can see your brothers and sisters prosper and they have their needs met and can honestly rejoice with them in spirit and feel no envy. Nor question God while your own needs are far greater and in desperate circumstances. You are finally 
dead to self. When you can receive correctness and, and reproof from one of less stature than yourself and can humbly submit inward as well as outward. Finding no rebellion or, or resentment rising up within your heart. Dying to self is both a one-time happening and a lifetime process. So how is dying to self a one-time happening? Well, we see in John 3, 3 to 7, states, Jesus replied, I tell you the truth, unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. What do you mean? exclaimed Nicodemus. How can an old man go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus replied, I surely, I assure you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and the spirit. Humans can reproduce only human life, but the Holy Spirit gives birth to spiritual life. So don't be surprised when I say you must be born again. And why is dying to self a lifetime process? You know, as Paul would put it, I die every day. While we were still on this earth, every day we are faced with temptation. Now, because of sin, our desires for material wealth is greater than our love for God. And our desire is to attract attention to ourselves rather than directing the attention of others towards God. Now, the Christian life is an ongoing daily process of dying to self and living for Jesus Christ because we are in danger every single day. Through God's grace, with each passing day, we ought to die daily to ourselves, to our rights, to our desires to be right, so we can mature and cultivate a life worth dying for, you know, a life found in Jesus Christ alone. You now, it's an intentional choice that you know, we ought to make every day of our lives. You know, it's a daily choice to place God first by surrendering yourself as a living sacrifice to the one you truly love. Today, are you longing for a life of happiness, of abundance? of enthusiasm, and of victory? Today, are you down and, and lifeless? Are you in bed and, and can't get up just to get to church? Are you wanting your life to count for something? Are you wanting to experience God in a deeper way? For there is no real living until there is first dying by the way of being a living sacrifice. The word of God tells us the concept of the animal sacrifice in, in the Old Testament was to remind them of their sins. As they presented their animal sacrifices, they are reminded of their sins. Reminded that God will provide the ultimate sacrifice. The one true Lamb of God that will take away the sins of this world. Today, there is no need to sacrifice dead animals anymore because ultimate sacrifice, the Lamb of God, who is Jesus Christ, has already been given on the cross by his blood 
which atones for all the sins of those who believe in him. Yet, the Holy Bible says, you are to present a living sacrifice, your bodies as a living sacrifice. And why? No, it's not that you can be saved, right? Because you are already saved by believing in him. You give your life, you give your bodies freely as a living sacrifice to God with, with a heart of thankfulness and, and willingness and love because you have experienced God's grace and mercy and love. The cross frees you from serving self to serving God. You no longer have to serve yourself because Jesus Christ has given you everything. You give your life to him because you finally realize how much he loves you. And you love him because he first. Now worship is more than coming to church or giving a, a few dollars or sharing God's word to someone. Worship is about your life, which is costly. Let me ask you this question. When was the first time the word worship appears in the King James Version of the Holy Bible? Think about it. So the answer is in Genesis 22, 5, where it states, And Abraham said unto his young men, Bide ye here with the ass, as I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. Did you notice that? You see, the word worship is entwined with the process of Isaac's sacrifice. Something that cost everyone an enormous amount. Worship is costly. Abraham must give his son as a living sacrifice. Worship is not only costly, but precious. Do you remember when Mary broke the <laughs> alabaster box and, and used all the precious ointments on Jesus Christ's feet. See, everyone must be saying that she's such a wasteful person. No, it's like you were to work for a year to pay for that ointment, and you used it up in seconds. But you see, she understood. Mary understood worship is costly. The aroma filled the entire home because of worship when costly brings glory to God. Brothers and, and sisters, the Christian life of worship is not just coming to church a couple of hours or, or singing a few songs or, or enjoying special music or placing money into the offering box or hearing a sermon. Neither it is about sharing the good news with other people. Worship is costly and precious. God, not only looking for your acts of worship, but mainly God is looking for a living sacrifice. God is looking for a loving heart. God is looking to see if you will give your life freely for his sake. You see, nothing glorifies God like a sanctified life. The God is glorious when you and I are willing because of our love for him to give our lives daily over to Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. 
See, the secret to living, to live life to the fullest, is when you and I live a life of sacrifice. The success of Jesus Christ's mission is that he came to earth to die. And the power of sin was destroyed, the will of God fulfilled. When you die to self and live for God daily, you will realize that the power of sin is destroyed and you are victorious in Jesus Christ. Romans 6, 1 through 4 states, Well then, should we keep on sinning so that God can show us more and more of his wonderful grace? Of course not. Since we have died to sin, how can we continue to live in it? Oh, have you forgotten that when we were joined with Christ in baptism, we joined him in his death? For we died and were buried with Christ by baptism. And just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we may also, now we also may live new lives. The power of sin has been destroyed. And the death that was its consequence had been paid by our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Now, despite the fact that the wages of our sins have been paid for on the cross, it's possible to still become a slave to sin with how you choose to live. The confession is a vital to a Christian. Every time you confess your sins to Jesus Christ, you grow stronger. Your struggles with sin is ongoing. But coming to Jesus Christ, the cross, keeps you humble and dependent on him. There is an ever-increasing power of God as you yield in obedience. Romans 6, 20-22, is when you were slaves to sin, you were freed from the obligations to do right. And what was the result? You are now ashamed of things you used to do. Things that ended in eternal doom. But now you are freed from the power of sin and have become slaves of God. Now you do the things that lead to holiness and result in eternal life. In Jesus Christ, we live daily in dependence on him and experience the freedom and hope of eternal life. See, believing your future is wonderfully protected in Jesus Christ is one way that you live through the power of Jesus Christ now to free you from sin. See, this hope helps you grow in your ability to overcome the deceptive traps of sin. And you give your lives freely to God and others in love. You end up being generous and big-hearted with whatever is given to you, which includes time, your talent, resources, and money. The secret to living is giving yourself away. But giving your life away increases your capacity through Jesus Christ to love, to have joy, to experience peace, and to enjoy life to its fullest. Giving your life away increases your capacity to have a deeper relationship your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and others. See, if you are holding onto the guilt and shame from 
your past. You cannot have a lively and abundant, loving relationship with God and others. He's Satan's most powerful weapon is encouraging you to look back at the guilt, shameful, scandalizing, and condemning moments of your past. Now, it's his purpose to deprive you from your happiness, peace, and liveliness. You know, by having you believe that God has not forgiven your sins. However, the good news is Jesus Christ not only forgives your sins, right, but he also releases you from the guilt and shame of your past. See, he takes away everything that limits your ability to live. Jesus, Christ said himself in John 10, 10b, I have come that they may have life, and that they may have it more abundantly. Knowing that sin, guilt, and shame, all of it, is dealt with when Jesus Christ sets you free. The secret of living is to undeniably believe in Isaiah 42, 25. It says, I, yes, I alone will blot out your sins for my sake and will never think of them again. To take pleasure in your own freedom. Live the life Jesus Christ has freed you to live abundantly. Wake up and live. Galatians 5.1 So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure that you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. Brothers and sisters, at the end of the day, the secret to living is always in Jesus Christ. Is Jesus Christ your life? Is Jesus Christ your daily passion? Is Jesus Christ your wealth? Is Jesus Christ your family? Is Jesus Christ your hope for the future? Jesus Christ died on the cross to self, to live for us forever. See, he became the corn of wheat that fell on the ground and died, that it may bring life for you and me. Today, knowing Jesus Christ gave himself to you, would you, this very morning, give yourself to him? Today, as you give your life to him, believe the power of sin is destroyed in your life. Today, lovingly accept and internalize the secret to living and dying. God ensures us when we die, we will raise as Jesus Christ did. Heavenly Father, bless our people as we live your gospel day.